New Scotland Yard, London, England. An address that is known worldwide. Headquarters of the Metropolitan Police. Guardians of the capital city against crime. In the Marwood lobby, an eternal flame burns in memory of those members of the civil staff who have given their lives in both world wars. Together with a book of honor in which is recorded the names of police officers who have lost their lives in the course of duty. And in a quiet corner of the building, a place where legend becomes fact that I would like to tell you about. But it is for the deputy commissioner to invite you in. Here in the yard is one of the police museums that many have heard of, but few have visited. It's an unusual museum and started life in 1875 when it was decided to keep certain items of property seized in connection with crime to instruct the young detectives of the then relatively new detective department of Scotland Yard. It was not too long before the press gave this collection of somewhat macabre artifacts the unofficial title of the Black Museum. And so it's remained over the years exhibiting the darker side of human nature, instructing the professional policeman and the lawyer and intriguing the layman by its very name and remoteness. We've never opened the doors of the Black Museum to the general public and all visits have been by way of invitation and always highly prized. The exhibits range from the apparently insignificant to the spectacular and from the hardly known to the infamous whose names are known throughout the world. They have in common one thing, supreme importance to the history of crime and the criminal, as you will see. Contained in the espionage section of the Black Museum are some of its most fascinating exhibits. First essential for a master spy is a good forged passport to give freedom of movement in the area of operation and a good forged birth certificate to give background history. Gordon Lonsdale had both. A passport showing him to have been born in Cobalt, Ontario on the 27th of August 1924 and a birth certificate to back it up with parentage. All correct and above board, it would seem. Except that his real name was Conan Molody and he was a master spy working for the Russian KGB. But it was as Gordon Lonsdale that he recruited a couple of clerks working in the Royal Navy's underwater weapons establishment at Portland in Dorset. In 1961, the clerks, Harry Houghton and Ethel G, would regularly catch a train to Waterloo to meet with Lonsdale in a cafe. But they were amateurs already under surveillance by Scotland Yard Special Branch, who wanted to know how their information was reaching Russia. So it was their contacts turn to be followed and to lead Special Branch detectives to a house in Ryslip, the home of Peter and Helen Kroger. They too had passports, but genuine ones. Born in New Zealand, they had settled in the United States and become ardent communists. It was in 1955 that they came to this country and Peter Kroger set up business as an antiquarian bookseller, a perfect front, exporting antique books to, amongst other places, Russia, where all the KGB had to do was translate the microdot information hidden in the print. When special branch detectives decided that the time was ripe to take the Krogers, they found this remarkable collection of secret hiding places they had for microfilm and microdots. That isn't fly dirt on the flypaper. They are microdots. Ordinary looking torch batteries that unscrew. A talcum powder tin that has powder only in the top half. The bottom comes off. Same with the hip flask. Take a swig. It's just that you seem to get through the drink rather quickly. The table lighter does light, but it doesn't last very long. Even the scroll map has a hidden compartment. It was these exhibits, plus a radio transmitter, that put Helen and Peter Kroger away for 20 years, and Gordon Lonsdale for 25, but he served only three of his sentence, and he didn't need this passport, as he was escorted to the Heerstrasse checkpoint in West Berlin and told to walk east. 
He did, but not as Gordon Monsdale, as Konon Trofimovich Molody, respected officer of the KGB. As he did, he passed a man who was walking west, Greville Wynne, British businessman arrested by the KGB as a spy. It was a straight swap. As for the Krogers, they did need their passports after nine years when a swap was arranged for them. On the 25th of October, 1969, they were taken from their separate prisons to catch a flight to Warsaw. Quite independently, they declined the offer of new clothes. So Peter Kroger, aged 63, and Helen Kroger, aged 55, met dressed just as they were when they parted nine years before. They travelled first class, lunched on smoked salmon, breast of chicken in mushroom sauce, and washed it down with champagne. The British taxpayer footed the bill.